Something that I've learned about myself throughout my adulthood, and especially through making these videos, is that I'm a really, really long-winded person. Especially in writing. Like, when I'm just talking off the cuff, I'm a rather short-spoken kind of guy. However, in writing, I really thrive. I personally see this as a blessing and a curse, specifically as it pertains to YouTube. Like, it works out great because I can make a 2 plus hour long video and it just kind of comes to me naturally and flows. However, the other edge of that sword is the fact that I struggle to make shorter videos. Like, to be specific, I have a metric ton of video ideas that started out as me covering just one specific episode, but somehow ended up quickly evolving into these ideas that are going to result in an hour plus long video. My big struggle is the fact that I really want to put out videos once a week, but that's a hard thing to do when pretty much every idea I have is a video that's going to take me like two weeks to finish. I probably could finish them quicker, but balancing a full-time 40 plus hour a week job just doesn't afford me enough time. On that note though, hey, quick shout out to my Patreon. For as little as 14 cents per day, you could help me reach my goal of quitting my day job and focusing on YouTube full-time. There's all sorts of cool perks, and on top of that, patrons get early access to videos as well as Patreon-exclusive videos that you can only see if you're a patron. I cannot stress enough, there's no obligation. You being here and watching this video on YouTube in the first place is more than enough support. However, if you want to go above and beyond in helping me meet my goal, then Patreon is a great way to do that. And get some cool rewards in return. As per usual, I have to take a sec to thank you so much for being here and for being a part of my YouTube journey. I really, really appreciate you being here. Extra special thanks to you all who are subscribed. You are the actual greatest, and if you're not subscribed, be sure to do that so you don't miss any of my future videos, and to help me on my journey to reach 100,000 subscribers. But with all of that jargon out of the way, back to my original point. I'm controlling myself for this video. We're looking at one episode and one episode only, I swear, no more, just the one. And we're checking out an episode of Cat Dog that honestly kind of breaks my heart even to this day. This one is also a very special one in my opinion because it's the first ever episode of Cat Dog in release order. The episode in question is called Dog Gone. This amazing episode starts out with early morning outside of Cat Dog's house. We pan up as we hear Dog begging Cat to throw a ball. As he throws it, Dog starts to chase, and we see Cat just getting ragdolled behind Dog as he runs. However, Cat is laughing and just having a blast. Cat throws it again, but this time, as Dog is running, he gets distracted by a squirrel. Squirrel! Breath. Let's get a soda. As Cat is rummaging through the fridge, Winslow walks out of his little hole in the wall to talk to them. He starts talking about how he has no idea how Cat Dog can do what they do, being attached to each other and having to spend every single minute with someone else. You guys never get any time to do what you want, cause you're always together! But well, Winslow, we love doing everything together, right Cat? Cat? Yeah, yeah, everything. Together. <laughs> so, anyway, we're so happy. We cut to later that night where we see Dog laying in bed reading comics, listening to some heavy metal on his cassette player, and snacking on handfuls of dog treats. Meanwhile, Cat is just calmly and silently reading a novel as we hear Winslow's words living rent free in his head, talking about how they're always together. Cat breaks his silence and finally talks to Dog. Hey, Dog, you know you're my best friend. But have you ever felt like you really need some time alone? You know, just to do alone type stuff. Because, I mean... <laughs> and I think it's best for both of us. So, what do you think? You say something? Nothing important. <laughs> Good night, pal. <laughs> The next morning, Cat slowly starts to wake up as Dog just rolls right out of bed and drags Cat out with him, smacking Cat's head on the floor in the process, of course. We cut to them at the breakfast table later on while Cat is reading the paper and Dog is just scarfing down his breakfast. 
Since their bodies are connected, Dog literally inhaling his breakfast is giving Cat hiccups. Dog suggests that Cat breathe into a paper bag to combat the hiccups. This always works for me, Cat. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. <gasps> Garbage day! Hold on, Dog. Control yourself. How about a bone? Or a game of fetch? Garbage day. Cat just gets demolished in the process of dog running as we see him get electrocuted, get his teeth dragged on the pavement, and just so much more. <laughs> Garbage day. And only three minutes till cat diggity dog. <laughs> yeah, we hate cats. <laughs> the only thing worse than a cat is a dog who hangs around with a cat. Huh? Hey, I think my watch stopped. <laughs> 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 We see the chase continue as Dog keeps running after the truck and Cat is just getting pummeled by the greasers. We cut to later that night when it's dark outside and Dog finally finishes chasing many hours later. That's it! I can't take another minute of this! Day in and day out, it's the same thing! What are you saying, Cat? I'm saying if I can't get some time to myself to do what I want to do! And I'm through. Uh, you're so funny, Cap. Come on, get up. Please get up, Cap, please. I'll do anything. Did you say anything? We cut Rat right on over to the next day where we see Cat walking out of their closet in an outfit that hides Dog and makes it look at least kind of like he's a normal cat. Dog questions if this is really what Cat wants, but Cat insists that it is rather aggressively, leaving Dog telling him that he's already gone so Cat doesn't need to worry. We fast forward an unknown amount of time to a cruise ship reminiscent of the Titanic. Cat is on the cruise ship enjoying himself. He gets to calmly read a book about 1001 uses for hairballs, enjoying some fine dining without hiccups, and finally enjoying the sunset. Hey dog, take a peek at this sunset. I'm not here. I know you're not here, but just look at the sunset, then you can resume not being here. Oh no, you know, Cat. You're the alone in this, and you can't get it with stupid old slappy dog hanging around. So, I'm not here. Adios, Elgato. All right, I'm on my own at last. Checking out this big old ocean. <sighs> Just doesn't get any better than this. After the cruise, we see Cat getting dropped off at home by a taxi. He finds the fetch ball that him and Dog used to play with, then he goes inside and he finds Dog's food bowl on the table, and then finally he sits on his remaining half of their old couch and he just finds himself thinking about how much he misses Dog. Winslow interrupts Cat's pondering. Sheesh, who died? Nobody. I'm enjoying me. All alone with me. Hey! You wanna play fetch? What are you, nuts? It's total Dolesville around here with that dog. See ya. Just then, the garbage truck pulls up and that gives Cat an idea. He ends up going inside of his handmade rear end to visit Dog. The interaction starts out extremely awkward as the two kind of talk over each other. Eventually, Cat tells Dog that the garbage truck is outside and he invites him to chase it, but Dog says that he's left that life behind for Cat. Look, Dog. Just do me a favor and chase the truck! But you said that- I said a lot of crazy things and I was wrong! So please, I'm begging you, just chase the truck! But why would you- Because I miss you! Chasing the truck, I mean. Oh, you miss me? Chasing the truck, you mean? Hey, Cat? Mm-hmm? I missed you, too. <laughs> Just like that, with Cat's blessing, Dog goes running after the truck as the greaser dogs give chase, which is where this episode ends. Now, before I jump into the analysis, I want to take a sec to praise Early Cat Dog for its in-between episode segments. 
they weren't in every episode of Cat Dog, but a lot of the time they would run a short one to two minute long segment between each episode, and I personally loved them as a kid. Sure, they may take a minute or two away from actual episode story building, but they made for a good quick gag, and I appreciated that. This one begins with Cat saying that it's time for some fan mail. He asks Winslow to bring him some mail, but Winslow says that there is none because they're about as popular as a monkey in a banana patch. I have one! <clears throat> Dear us, where did we come from? Signed, you and me. Pathetic. <laughs> Uh, uh, good question, dog. Uh, of course it um, uh, comes as no surprise to you at home that Dog and I are descended from royalty. Dog says that he doesn't get it, but Cat says to just go along with it. Dog runs with it, and he says that they used to be the king and queen of England, and they wore crowns of sausage, dental floss, and bowling balls. <clears throat> yeah, well, well that, that, that was the rumor, but, but uh, we did grow up in a beautiful country. Beautiful country, high in the frigid peaks of the Florida Alps. <laughs> Florida Alps? Mm -hmm. There we learned to fly. Oh, well, hold on, dog. Out into outer space! and back down into the ocean. There we found deep sea leprechauns and a void so dark we got lost in a crazy negative dimension. Cat cuts him off and says that's enough. Winslow starts teasing them, saying no wonder they don't have any fan mail, but just then, Dog catches eye of a small letter poking out from under Winslow's door. Oh, what is this? <laughs> To Cat Dog. Winslow? Okay, so you got a couple of letters I forgot to tell you about. Big deal. All right, well, fresh off the heels of that short, I just gotta say that I love how that went off the rails so quickly. First of all, the grammar of Dog's letter that he wrote for himself and Cat was just hilarious. Dog really is such an innocent character, and he just has such a sweet, childlike mind. He's really creative too, which is evidenced throughout the series, but this short is a pretty good example. He literally pulled that whole story out of nowhere, and it was just so off the wall. From sausage dental floss and bowling ball crowns to deep sea leprechauns, all the way to dark and endless void, this was a wild ride of a story. Dog is an interesting character to pick apart, and this episode and short gives us a great opportunity to do that. With this being the first episode, they kind of hyperbolize the character's mannerisms just a bit to really emphasize what we as viewers can expect from these characters going forward. I appreciate that as it pertains to the show specifically because after this episode they really stuck with the groundwork that they had laid. Whereas other shows would do the same, then in later seasons change the characters pretty drastically. Looking at you, Cosmo. Cat Dog did a great job of maintaining that groundwork that they worked so hard to lay. Now, as for this episode itself, taking it from the top, I have to start with that title card music. In my opinion, this music isn't very fitting for the episode itself, and just overall didn't really match the feel of the episode. But I get it. It's the first episode, they're probably still figuring out the vibe and feel of the show, and of course you don't want to be a huge downer right out the gate. Transitioning from there though, this episode starts out with a shot early in the morning focusing on Cat Dog's mailbox. I love this. I just love it. Just the opening shot of the mailbox tells us so much about this show right out the gate, specifically as it pertains to the dynamic between cat and dog. The mailbox has depictions of their faces on it, but also the writing on the mailbox is very telling. Cat's writing is small, neat, and very centered, whereas Dog's writing is sloppy, large in the sense that it's covering part of Cat's name, and completely off-center and rotated slightly. This really symbolizes their relationship very well in my eyes. With peace and love, Cat is the boring old stick in the mud for the most part, being very calm, calculated, and collected. 
Meanwhile, Dog is the happy-go-lucky, fun, fast-paced, bold one in the relationship. This is very much reflected in the way that they designed the mailbox, and furthermore, that's also shown in this episode, specifically in the part where Cat is sitting alone in their house, and Winslow comes out to talk to him. Winslow tells Cat that this place is Dolesville without Dog when Cat tries to convince Winslow to play fetch with him. This sums things up really well. Dog is kind of the bright and shiny center of attention, while Cat is just kind of there. It's honestly kind of sad when you look at it that way. Cat kind of gets left by the wayside because everyone is so much more interested in Dog and what he's got going on, but on that same note, there's a lot of times where we see Cat being a jerk to everyone. I can't help but wonder if maybe Cat is a jerk to everyone as a result of how everyone views him, or if he's just inherently like that, but hey, who knows. Moving on from there though, I have to touch on the way that the dynamic between Cat and Dog has changed over the years. Fair warning guys, I haven't seen this episode in a minute, but I was honestly surprised to see Cat laughing and enjoying himself while Dog was chasing after the ball. In all of my years watching this show, I'm so used to seeing Cat just being miserable while Dog is running. You kind of can't blame him though. Like, being stuck to someone and having to go everywhere that they go is hard enough as it is, but every time they do, Cat ends up having his head bounce off the pavement like someone dribbling a basketball. That cannot be comfortable, so it's understandable that he's pretty pissed about it. I just had to bring that aspect up because I was genuinely caught off guard by the sight of Cat really just enjoying being dragged around by Dog. Another thing I have to touch on is the way that Dog is distracted by the squirrel while he was chasing the ball that Cat threw. This was just so fitting for his character. One thing I love about first episodes, regardless of the show, is the way that a first episode has that special way of setting the foundation of the whole series and gives us an understanding of what we need to know about the characters. I also realized throughout the events of this episode that I am basically Dog. I'm easily distracted by shiny things, and I'm a happy-go-lucky person for the most part. I especially felt it during this scene. Eating in bed isn't exactly my cup of tea, but chilling, reading comics, listening to metal, all while snacking. I mean, come on, you can't beat it. Dog is pretty much my spirit animal, and I'm not sure if that's something to be proud of, but hey, I'm just gonna roll with it. I also have to touch on Winslow for a second. Having seen this show from start to finish, I have an understanding for Winslow as a character that wasn't yet established at this point, obviously with this being the first episode. Later on in the series, we learn that Winslow basically adopted Cat Dog when they were babies and he stumbled upon them in the streets. Like I said though, at this point, that isn't the case. This early on in the series, Winslow was more or less a mild antagonist. Like, he isn't necessarily rancid rabbit or greaser level antagonist, but he definitely did his fair share of egging them on and getting them into sometimes negative situations, just like this one. Winslow made those comments about Cat Dog being stuck together forever and how neither of them get any freedom, and those words were burned into Cat's brain to the point where he couldn't enjoy doing anything with Dog simply because he felt like he was trapped. Personally, I feel like there's a chance that this would be like the ultimate level of claustrophobia to an extent. Like, you're forced to be so close to this person at all times, and you couldn't even get away if you wanted to. Personally, I don't have a conjoined twin, so I'm not too familiar with what it feels like, but I can understand why Winslow's words would stick with Cat the way that they did. Moving on from there though, I have to point out just how dramatic Cat is. This dude literally said that if he doesn't get to do anything for himself, he's going to straight up die. Like, listen, I get it. I totally understand being upset because you can't do your own thing. That sucks, man. But like, you don't gotta die over it. And like, geez, the panic that Dog felt when Cat was pretending to be dead. It just broke my heart. He started crying and freaking out a little bit. It made me feel so bad for him. Dog is just so pure of heart and such a gentle animal. He cares about Cat so much. He loves Cat like a brother and ultimately he just wants Cat to be happy. Which led to this whole situation and him being willing to make such a massive sacrifice for Cat. Dog more or less gave up his freedom and free will. He was pretty much forced to just follow silently behind Cat for as long as Cat decided. He gave up his ability to freely do the things that he likes to do just for Cat's happiness. 
That right there speaks so much about Dog. That act just said volumes about him as a cognizant being and how much he's willing to sacrifice for the happiness of others, especially his brother Cat. Dog is just a ray of sunshine in Cat's life, and it took Cat completely treating Dog like trash for him to realize it, sadly enough. We see the realization start when Cat is on that cruise ship. At that point, when Cat's enjoying the sunset and he invites Dog to come see it, Dog declines, insisting that he wants Cat to be happy. At this point is where we see Cat's demeanor start to change. You can tell that he's starting to miss his ray of sunshine in his life. Fast forward to when Cat gets dropped off at home, we see him arrive to a stormy and gloomy day. This right here really just set the tone perfectly. Cat had this picture in his mind of being at peace and finally being able to do whatever he wants, but when he finally got that, he realized just how isolating that is and ultimately, life is just boring without Dog. All in all, the moral of this story is not to take your closest loved ones for granted. At least, that's what I got out of it. Cat didn't realize just how lucky he is to have a brother like Dog, and that realization was a huge wake up call for Cat. Now, moving on from there, I have a few minor things that I have to touch on. During that scene where Dog is chasing the garbage truck all day, we see Cat getting dragged and just getting destroyed. He gets electrocuted and has his teeth rubbed on the cement, as well as being dragged through a stranger's house. Now, first things first, this sequence was just hilarious. Just the whole sequence of events had me in stitches, but I can't help but wonder, how did Dog not be affected by any of this? He just kept running like nothing was happening. You'd think at least one of these obstacles would phase him, but nope, they didn't. I can accept that, maybe he dodged them somehow, okay fine, I will take that answer. However, when Cat got electrocuted, Dog definitely should have felt that. They are literally two parts of the same body, especially considering that it was the full voltage of a power line, if this was real life, that would have immediately killed them. But that's just the obvious one. I do have to question the part where Cat is having his teeth dragged across the concrete. I know from my years watching this show that what happens to Cat's teeth affects Dog's tooth health and vice versa. If Dog chews on tinfoil, then Cat feels it on his teeth. When Cat brushes his teeth, Dog's teeth get healthier, not his own. Now, riddle me this, by that same logic, shouldn't Cat scraping his teeth across the road have affected Dog and hurt his teeth? Like, that level of pain and trauma to the gums and teeth should have been enough to stop him dead in his tracks. I want to call that a minor inconsistency, however, I'm compelled to be lenient due to the fact that this was before the teeth cannon was established. So, I'm gonna give it a pass. But still, I just had to bring it up. Maybe one of you guys can rationalize it down in the comments. Moving on from there though, it's time to drag the greasers a little bit. Can we take a sec to look at early lube? This lube looks very different from the lube that we would see in future episodes. Putting the two side by side, we can see a pretty clear difference in the face more than anything. This early version of lube just feels wrong to me. I feel like at this point, they may have not been dead set on having him be just as dumb as he ended up being later on in the series. Like, the way he talks in this episode kind of implies him being dim-witted, but he doesn't necessarily seem just as dumb as the lube we would see later on in the series. Personally, between the two options, I lean a little more towards liking the final version of lube myself. The way that they draw his face specifically just perfectly epitomizes what they're trying to portray him in as a character. Speaking on the greasers though, what's up with Shriek? There's so many times we see her doing this weird thing where she's like shadow boxing but also like kicking her feet at the same time, almost like she's dancing. It bothers me and I don't know why. We see her doing the same thing during the intro sequence to the show and it always had me questioning what she was doing when I saw it. I will say it is kind of funny though because the greasers are all equally violent for the most part. They have an equal want to beat up Cat Dog. however Shriek seems to be the one of the group who's the biggest spitfire and isn't afraid to just talk smack to someone. Which honestly is really fitting considering that she's a small ankle biter of a dog. No offense to small dogs of course, I have a small dog and of course I love him so much. However, they call it small dog syndrome for a reason. 
Moving on from there though, there's a couple more minor things I want to bring up. First of all, I have to give some praise to this smooth transition right here from night to day in this scene, and that moon. There's just something about the color of the moon in this transition that really sticks out to me. I absolutely love it. It's such a small minor thing, but it captivated me to the point where I literally couldn't not bring it up. I did notice one thing during the scene where Cat returns from his cruise and gets dropped off by the taxi. Watch what happens to the taxi. This thing just straight up drives off the cliff after dropping off Cat. That right there just comes with a whole slew of morbid implications. Did the driver survive the drop? And like, why? Was the drive with Cat that miserable? On that same note, anyone else think it's kind of strange that they live on top of this weird mountain? It kind of reminds me of Mount Crumpet from How the Grinch Stole Christmas. It kind of falls in line with the whole trope of the one who is different from everyone else in town living on the awkward mountain on the outskirts of town. For the Grinch, it makes sense. He's a huge jerk, so of course he isn't going to want to live by anyone else, and nobody would want him living near them anyways, that is, until the end when his heart grew three sizes or whatever it was. With Catdog though, it doesn't make much sense. I mean, other than the Greasers and Rancid Rabbit, pretty much everyone in town is okay with them. I'm not sure why they live secluded up on a weird mountain, that's just one of those creative decisions that the show's creators planned but never really shine any light on. It's whatever though, that's not really a huge deal. Lastly though, I have to pose a question. What was Dog doing in there the whole time? Like, when Cat went in to check on him, Dog was just kind of standing there listening to music. It made me sad to see him like that honestly, just standing there alone and pretty much doing nothing. It was kind of interesting though how they portrayed the inside of the makeshift butt that Dog was inside of. They made it look like a pretty much open room, which makes absolutely no sense considering that it's basically a pair of pants that Dog was wearing over his whole half of their body, but hey, it made it feel like Dog didn't have it all too bad in there, I guess. Of course, I gotta ask though, what do you guys think? Did this episode break your heart like it did to mine? Also, like I said, I can totally see myself in Dog, but is there a cartoon character that you see yourself in? It doesn't even have to be in this show, it can be any show. I honestly just want to see your guys' answers. Let me know in the comments down below, I always love seeing your guys' feedback. If you enjoyed this show, then be sure to drop a like and give praise to the YouTube algorithm, and as always, thank you so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you in the next one. Peace. Cat dog, cat dog, cat dog, cat dog. Alone in the world with a little cat dog.